EVs are breaking out everywhere. They are taking over in the world. Tesla was an early leader in that space. Others have jumped on and done quite well for themselves, some better than others, of course. But uh, today we're talking about an article in which the godfather of EVs explains why China is winning the race to go electric and why hybrids are so absolutely silly. Uh, I'm joined by Herbert from Brighter. Uh, he's the one who makes me brighter. Thank you for that. It's a wonderful uh, advantage to uh, the alternative, which is uh, dimmer with Brian. We don't want that. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, dimmer with Brian. I think that's uh, that's an idea. Someone did suggest for April Fools. I changed my show to Brightest with Brian, and uh, that would be that would be helpful. That would be helpful. Uh, you are muted, by the way. I love it. Love it. <laughs> That's great, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, we brag about how smart you are, and then you're muted. So that's uh, kind of fun, kind of <laughs> silly there. That's not hey, the, guys. Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm Do, not the guy. I always bring people like you, and that's what uh, the goal. Well, you've got a really good collection of people who are real experts in certain things. Yeah. And uh, the nice thing is when you get someone like me who – doesn't understand a, a certain aspect i'm happy to say that and uh and a lot of your guests are wise enough to defer to people who actually know better and that's great um so uh, the godfather of evs explains why china's winning the race and why hybrids are a fool's errand former nissan and aston martin executive andy palmer known as the godfather of evs thanks to his work on the nissan leaf now he explained that china took the lead and that the leaf was a real tough one to get nissan to agree to let alone build so uh he worked at Nissan. Uh, he led the development of the Leaf, the world's first mass market car, which sold over a half million units all time since launch in 2010. I wish I could say it was driven by a motivation uh, to better the world, but actually it was driven by the Prius kicking our butt, Palmer mm -hmm. told Business Insider. Now, this article is from the Netherlands. This is translated to English, so it is actually a really solid translation. Rather than copying the success of the hybrid Prius, he pushed them to go fully electric, but now China's racing ahead. BYD, big, big brand. But there are, I, I can name more Chinese brands that you now recognize than we can name, you know, European brands or Japanese brands that have gotten serious about EVs yet. The Chinese cars are bloody good, offering remarkable value for money for what they deliver. Their battery technology is uh, class leading. They've concentrated very much on their software. So we will talk more about the rest of the article, but let's just start there. Yeah. Chinese EVs, you've seen some of the videos out there. You've seen some of the reviews. Uh, would you agree that they are that they are leading? Yeah, well, I've interviewed people like Michael Dunn uh, and these guys, you know, auto industry executive, currently consults for many of the top auto companies. He lives in China, lived in Asia for decades. He can speak Chinese incredibly well, very fluent. And he came on a show just recently and he basically was sounding the alarm, right? He goes, despite what you hear from China, make no mistakes about it. China is in a global warfare. They're coming out to expand beyond uh, their own shore, their own you know, country. And uh, they, they've got a very, uh, you know, strategy about it. Surround the enemy before you come in. And so if you take a look at how many Chinese auto factories are already out there outside of China, right? You're looking at all of South America, um, Australia, other places, they're everywhere. Thailand, they're all over the place. And so they're making their way out there. Now, the question of whether or not they're going to be able to break it into Europe and whether or not they're going to break into the U.S. is still out. We don't know yet. One of the things that they say in this article is that China has high quality cars, don't underestimate them, and they have great software. I'm not so sure about the software part. Uh, and, you know, again, don't underestimate them. They'll catch up there, but it's, it's really is, uh, you know, they, you and I have covered this so often. The Chinese have great cars. Are they profitable or are they not? I just did a fantastic show on BYD where this independent um, accounting firm has uncovered that BYD has $44 billion in debt that they've been hiding. So they hide it through supply chain partners. And the time that they take before they pay those suppliers is now 273 days from 2023. We'll find out soon mm. what has happened in 2024 if that is expanded. But you can see what's happening here is that the government is completely funding 
not only BYD, but all these supply chains, because the government of China really has a big push. We want to own electric vehicles. So yes, absolutely. When you've got the power of the government to back you, I don't think the BYD is going to go down or anything like that, because you've got the power of the government to back you. And they're not only backing you, they're backing all the supply chain. But it is certainly a house of cards here. So you are they making profit? No, right? No, definitely they are not. This is kind of revealed to you at this point that they are not making profit. So yes, they can make great cars. They can show up as good quality. Do they have this offer? Not really sure yet. Can they go global? Not really sure yet. And again, we can talk about like what's going to happen, the tariffs uh, that's going to be put in, made in America. Can they actually make that move? The one thing about the Chinese automakers is that, so, you know, like they actually are not automated. <laughs> the factories are not as automated as you think. Other than Tesla, the rest, including specifically BYD, they have come out. They're they're very because it's 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 more it's low cost people to hire in China. Well, what happens when you go and build a factory in other parts of the world, especially let's say the U.S. and you have a made you have to have a factory in the U.S. They're not set up for the automation at that point. So lots of discuss here, but that's just the, the first you know, points. On BYD's lack of automation, it is a glaring mistake. And yeah. you look at their at their headcount and they've got like a million employees. Now, mind you, they also make batteries, but the batteries is a much lower uh, man hour kind of operation. Those have to be automated uh, in ways that an auto line doesn't, which is even worse when you think about it. And yeah, the reason to avoid automation is automation has a very high upfront cost. And if you are as cash constrained as this report suggests, yeah, uh, you know that broke friend of yours? Mm -hmm. Imagine how much less broke they would look if they could just not pay all their bills until nine months later. Mm -hmm. And that's if that's what they're doing, I see it. And that's one of the reasons I've hesitated to uh, avoided uh, investing in companies that do not trade on U.S. stock exchanges yeah. because the auditing requirements are very different. And while Warren Buffett may feel like he has a reasonable handle on investments outside the U.S., I do not. So that is a consideration. On the software front, I would argue, apart from Tesla, very few companies have good software. Uh, Xiaomi is a notable exception. Yeah. Xiaomi is a cell phone company. They know software. They have in-house software capabilities, but that is just one company. And if you look at so one account I've been following for, you know, years, but uh, following a lot over the last couple of weeks, Kyle Connor mm. is in China and he is driving all over the country. He actually got a Chinese driver's license and yeah, they, he's getting to, he's Got to, gets to go to the Giga factory, but he gets to, he found a, a V8 Mustang, which is a little weird, but he gets to drive all kinds of cars that you would never otherwise see. The Xiaopeng P7, pretty cool. Um, and this one in the mirror, that's a an autonomously driven van, I think. Mm. Uh, it's at the very least an electric van, but he's gotten to experience all kinds of products that we just don't see. Yeah, it's got an FSD system. And that's the other thing is their FSD systems may not be as good as Tesla's, but they're very good. They're better than anyone else I've seen operating in the US on cars that are actually available. So this is, and this is, uh, yeah, it driving itself. So he's out there looking at these cars, experiencing them firsthand, driving them, dealing with their charging networks. And he's having good experiences a, a great follow if you don't yeah um, um so this is what china did right they said we're going to get into electric vehicle they're going to fund this and hundreds of electric vehicle companies pop up hundreds have died but many will survive and they're competing and they're building on electric vehicles which is the future what happens when you got the german auto you got the u.s auto and they decide we're going to go hybrids <laughs> we're going to take our you know and you've got this guy, Andy Palmer, listen to him. It's a fool's errand. It's like, I, I, you know, like you said, the longer you stay on hybrids, the longer you delay your focus on electric vehicles, the better these guys get. You'll never catch up. What's the point? If, if you don't think electric vehicles is the future, you think hybrids is the future, then okay, fine. But if you are wrong, what's the point at this point, you know? You're too late. So earlier you'd mentioned that tariffs can have the impact of keeping China at bay. Uh, it looks like the longer term strategy is to say, look, we can't for security reasons, allow any cars into the country from 
China uh, if they have the full sensor suite needed for autonomy. Well, all cars are going to have this before too long, which means at any price, you wouldn't be able to bring in a Chinese car. Of course, you can say, well, we'll sequester the data in the U.S. or have a U.S. company manage it. Is that sufficient? I could see ways where a government would say, no, I still don't trust it. It's not good enough. And what that would do is create an insulated pocket. The U.S. would be insulated from the threat of Chinese EVs. We're seeing cars sold into Australia that are electric and still attractive, compelling vehicles that are at prices that you and I would look at and say, my goodness, that is a heck of a deal. You know, 30 grand or so. That's that's a fine car for that price, assuming it's got the ability to survive and have good quality, but the warranties are so long that it would be less of a concern for first time buyers uh, to the brand, new to the brand buyers. So I think, uh, yeah, there's, I don't know how long you can keep China down. They have the capacity to build the batteries. They have the chemistries, the technologies. Is it, are they even stoppable at that point? So the, the, the question is, and I asked this to Michael Dunn, right? In order to be a successful auto business, uh, you know, one of the leaders in auto, like how did Toyota do it? How did, you know, the Japanese, uh, how did the Koreans do it? You have to go global. And what does global mean? You need to sell in Europe, you need to sell in the US. If you don't sell in the US, do you have enough volume of sales globally to actually then reduce your costs and be efficient and so forth? That's the big question. Now, what you're saying is that they might not be able to, right? They, they have to build a plant in the U.S. They, how would they get past the restrictions on the software, right? Which, and all cars will need software, as you said, for full self-driving or autonomy, or even just, you know, just the way the path is the future technology first kind of car companies. How are you going to do that if there is a rule, a law, that you can't have Chinese-owned software in your products? That's the big question. You're right. So they would have to partner possibly with Tesla, part of possibly with other companies who can provide that. So I don't know. I think that that part is dead in the water at this point. I don't see a Chinese car company making inroads. Even if, And then if they do build in the U.S. a factory, like we said, they have to be more automated than less to make it profitable. So... I, I, it's going to be a tough, uh, tough break for them. But the way Michael Dunn and says, and where are you getting the batteries? Well, so right. Oh, I see. If you if they if they have tariffs on the batteries that are imported, uh, but but Michael Dunn says that it's like surround and then conquer. So he still believes that the Chinese will be able to conquer to to break through. They'll find a way to get that in. So. We'll see what happens. But, and the world is large. If they've got, you know, the BYD Seagull for 10 grand, export it uh, in Brazil. I think it's 18,000 uh, is the cost equivalent in U.S. dollars. That's a that's a car that will sell. And they will, yeah, if you if you can use up all those markets before even building factories there. But like you're saying, building a factory in the U.S., are you, you don't have the automation skills yet. If you're going to be importing the batteries that still have substantial, now are you going to build a battery factory too? At that point, I mean, maybe they do a joint venture. I, I just don't know. I don't see the solution. But these protectionist policies can only keep them at bay for so long. And EVs, they're here to stay. Uh, Andy explains that there is, and I'd reached out to him when this article first ran to see if he would be interested in doing an interview. I've not mm. been able to get in yeah, contact with him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't think that <sighs> hybrids will buy you time, but if you're not going, if you're a, a pretty duck on the water, you better be kicking like crazy mm. below the surface or you're not going to get anywhere. So uh, yeah, I think that's pretty interesting there. And yeah, and a huge thanks and shout out to Kyle for all the crazy great footage he's got. Mm. Uh, by the way, those colored lights on the front indicate that it is in self-driving. Yep. Yeah, autonomous mode. So that is pretty neat. Guys in the comments, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Uh, leave it. It's a, a fun thing to do. And if you don't like doing that, just give it a thumbs up or down. Those are also permitted and encouraged. Sometimes uh, I just need the, you know, uh, validation <laughs> and or uh, negative reinforcement. Both work. Everybody else, like, subscribe, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots in the next one.